Hello everyone, good afternoon and welcome to this bioaccess workshop. Uh, my name is Sophia, I'm a third year graduate student here at the Rockefeller University and I'll be moderating this workshop today on how to apply for summer research experiences. And so it's my pleasure to introduce today's speaker, Dr. Carlos Rico. So Carlos is originally from Leon, Mexico. He attended Hamilton College where he majored in chemical physics with a minor in biology. And for his PhD, he decided to combine these two interests pursuing his doctoral studies in the Transitutional Training Program in Chemical Biology here in New York City. And he did his thesis work at the laboratory of Dr. Thomas Sackmar at the Rockefeller University. And there he developed new tools to probe G-protein coupled receptor ligand binding interactions at single molecule scale. And he developed a platform to screen a large number of drug candidates for HIV. So after graduating, guided by his love of teaching as well as an interest in microscopy that he developed during his PhD, Catalyst joined the Imaging Core facility here at Rockefeller. So now he's currently continuing his studies at Well Cornell Medical School across the street, and he's also the lead outreach and workshop coordinator for Scientifico Latino. So please join me today in welcoming Dr. Carlos Rico. And we will be having a Q&A session at the end of Dr. Rico's presentation via the Zoom Q&A feature, so not the chat. So please hold your questions until the end, and thank you. So, Catalyst. Thank you very much, Sophia for that very nice introduction. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I would like to thank, I am honored to be here to talk to you um, on how to apply for some of our richest experiences. Now, what is a summer research program? A summer research program allows students interested in PhD or MD PhD programs to conduct research for eight to 10 weeks in the summer. Students are mentored by a postdoctoral fellow or graduate student. Juniors and sophomores are eligible to apply and some programs will allow freshmen to apply and the deadlines range anywhere from January to March. Programs will provide housing, and a stipend, and in some cases, they will also provide faculty seminars, professional development workshops, and plan social activities. An example of a soft program is a program at Rockefeller that is open to students finishing their sophomore and junior years of college. You can see in here photo of the class of 2019. And you can use the QR code to access the homepage of the Rockefeller soft program. The program lasts 10 weeks from early June to mid August. And you will be working full time in a research laboratory where you will also have the opportunity to attend lectures and workshops and participate in a urna club. You will receive a stipend of $6,000 with free housing for those that cannot commute. There is an URL link so you can apply online and the deadline is on February 1st. My colleagues at Scientifico Latino have compiled a list of fellowships and summer programs that are available to students. In the list, you will find 50 different fellowships in STEM fields that are available to undergraduate students, including fellowships such as the Barry Goldwater Fellowship and the Boring Scholarship. If you're nearing graduation and are thinking of applying to graduate school, we also have a list of 68 different fellowships that are available to students throughout different stages of their graduate career. And we have compiled a database of over 500 different undergraduate research programs in different STEM fields, including biology, chemistry, physics, public health, computer science, and more. This, I want to emphasize that these databases are open to everyone 
free of charge. You can access them by using the QR code, which is located in this slide, and you can search through these soft programs by STEM field, state, citizenship status, and whether or not they accept high school students. Now, the question that will arise is, how do I choose a summer program? First, you want to consider programs that are going to be aligned with your scientific interest. For example, if you are interested in high energy physics, Duke University and Virginia Tech will offer programs in this field. But let's say that you are more interested in synthesizing small molecules, then you may want to consider the programs at Caltech or MIT. But perhaps you are more interested in studying protein dynamics, you can consider the programs at Columbia University or the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Perhaps you want to discover the neural mechanisms underlying memory and learning, then you can consider Rockefeller University or Princeton University. And for those students that are interested in applying to MD-PhD programs, while Cornell offers a gateway to the laboratory program, and the University of Michigan has a SMART program. I also encourage you to consider other factors such as location and stipend. I want to discuss with you the other benefits that summer programs offer to students. For example, students can disseminate new scientific knowledge through lectures, poster presentations, and peer reviewed journals. You can present your research at conferences like the annual biomedical research conference for minority students. And by attending these conferences, you will have the opportunity to expand your professional network where you can establish new collaborations, meet graduate school admission officers and obtain application fee waivers, attend professional development workshops, and interact with a community of underrepresented minority students in STEM. I also want to highlight that the programs offer also professional and personal skill developments. For example, you can develop your research skills, such as hypothesis testing, protocol development, and optimization data analysis and visualization. You can develop skills such as scientific communication, teamwork, expanding your professional network, personal skills such as critical thinking, problem solving, curiosity, creativity, and you will get an exposure of the different fields that are available to students with a PhD or an MD PhD, such as an academic researcher, medical scientist, biotech, consultant, and more. I want to highlight that all of these skills are skills that admissions committees at PhD and MD-PhD programs are looking for in their candidates. In other words, they are looking for qualities that will make an applicant a good scientist. So now that I've discussed with you what is the summer program and how do you choose one and the many benefits that they offer, I want to talk about the different components that make the summer research application. There will be an online application where you will talk about your background, your demographics and education, a personal statement where you will talk about your scientific interest, research experience, your professional goals, why you want to attend that program, a research proposal for some programs where you will need to provide the goals for your project and a plan. You will need to also submit a resume and a CV that will provide the admissions committee with an overview of your academic and extracurricular activities. Two to three letters of recommendation where you can talk about your scientific, where your writers will talk about your scientific and personal qualities and describe how they know you. And last, 
depending on the program, an official or unofficial transcript where they can see your academic preparedness and performance. Now, I am providing here to you a tentative deadline that you can follow as you are thinking of applying to summer programs for the upcoming summer. This is a deadline or this timeline can be modified given your academic and personal circumstances. Given that we are in early October, you can think about by the end of October to have email professors for a letter of recommendation, start drafting your personal statement, and writing or editing your CV or resume. Before Thanksgiving break, you want to have finalized your personal statement and have requested a transcript from the registrar if you are required to submit an official transcript. And also finalize your CV and resume. Before winter break, you want to make sure that you have reminded your professors to submit their letters of recommendation and send them along your application materials. And starting in January, you want to submit your applications as soon as possible. Now, I want to discuss with you some of the things that admissions committees look for in their applicants. First of all, applicants need to demonstrate logical and structured decision-making regarding their academic experiences and clear career goals. Personal statements need to effectively show how you will benefit from participating in the program. And you need to show that you can, now, one of the questions that we get asked a lot is, I don't have research experience. Therefore, I am not going to apply because I don't think I will get in. I want to demystify that myth because you can still apply without research experience. What the programs are looking for are students that can explain a scientific problem clearly, develop an experiment to test your hypothesis and explain the results. You will also need letters of recommendation that should highlight the applicant's research skills, scientific attitude, academic competency, and your prospects as a future scientist. And last, if you can, you want to highlight leadership roles and volunteer work that is aimed at increasing representation in STEM or communicating science to a non-scientific audience. Now, for the remainder of your presentation, I'm going to discuss with you the different elements that make up the uh, summer research application. I will begin first by talking about the letters of recommendation. One of the questions that we get asked a lot is, how do I contact a professor for a letter of recommendation? I want to emphasize that professors are extremely busy individuals. Therefore, when communicating with them, you want to make sure that you are succinct, direct, and respectful when contacting them. In many cases, professors will prioritize which emails to reply depending on the subject line of that email. Therefore, to make it easier for the professor to see your email so that your email doesn't get lost, you want to state the main point of why you are contacting them in the first place. So you can write out in the subject line, request for a letter of recommendation. You also want to make sure that in your email, you submit supporting information, such as your CV and resume, your personal statement, a summary of research experience, or if you have been working in the lab, some of the contributions that you've done to the project, and the list of the programs that you're applying to. Now, you've hit send, and it's been 15 minutes, and you haven't heard back from that professor. Don't panic. I want you to remember they are very busy. 
give it about two weeks before you reach out back to them and inquire about your initial email. When you are requesting a letter of recommendation, give them at least one month in advance to write it. And please do not ask for a letter of recommendation just at the deadline. It is very likely that they won't submit it. Now, in the next slide, I want to give you an example of how not to write an email. Oh, sorry, I'm skipping ahead. First of all, I want to discuss with you, how do you choose a professor to write you a letter of recommendation? I'm providing here in this slide, an overview of some of my professional contacts in the academic year of 2008 and 2009. You're going to notice that some professors have been highlighted in blue. I highlighted these individuals in blue because these are professors with whom I took science classes and done some research in their laboratories and I asked them for a letter of recommendation. You want to ask science faculty members to write you a letter of recommendation. You will notice that I've done well in other courses, but I didn't ask them for a letter of recommendation because they are not science faculty members. One of the questions that we also get asked, especially in big universities, when a lot of the teaching is done by lecturers or teaching assistants, is that I haven't interacted enough with my professor for them to know me. Can I submit a letter from a TA? The answer to that is yes, but only if the TA and the professor co-sign the letter. Also, do not submit a letter by a sports coach. And it happens very often that committees will get letters of family members, but do not submit a recommendation letter from your father. You will notice that my dad has some chemistry experience, but I did not ask him for a letter of recommendation because the committees want to see letters from science faculty members. Now, how do you contact one of them? So I'm gonna give you a couple of seconds to look over this email. This is an example of how not to contact your professors for a letter of recommendation. It is convoluted. You're not addressing your professor formally, and you go on and on about the research project. When you're emailing your professors, you want to be respectful, you want to be concise, and you want to be direct. Remember, they're very busy. So you want to make it short, and you want to make the job easier. This is what you want to aim for. Now, in the next couple of slides, I will discuss with you the elements of the personal statement. Now, how do I write a strong personal statement? First of all, you want to highlight research interests and experiences, as well as your professional aspirations. You want to focus on the science. It is not a literary story, and please don't overemphasize personal details. It is acceptable if you don't have results from previous research projects. What they're looking for are applicants that can describe a scientific problem and design an experiment. You also want to talk about the experiences, personal or academic, that make you a good scientist, your motivations for becoming a good scientist, and you want to inform them of your interest in that program. Over the next four slides, I will present you with a personal statement of an applicant that apply for research programs in astrophysics. I am giving you this as an example because the applicant highlights really well multiple things 
that may have a successful applicant. I will give you a couple of seconds to read over the uh, paragraphs that are presented in this slide. One of the things that personal statements do really well is that they can highlight challenges that you have to overcome. In this personal statement, the applicant discusses the extra challenges that she had to face as a woman of color from a low income family and the lack of resources and funding at her high school and how that impacted her decision as to whether or not to apply to research programs in astrophysics. I want to add that it is not only the challenges that you have to deal with, but it is also what you learn, how you overcame these challenges, and how these experiences solidify your interest in science. What the committees are looking for is how you have grown as an individual and as a professional. The other thing that you want to emphasize in your personal statement are meaningful experiences. For example, the applicant talks about the impact that research had in her decision to continue pursuing science. For her, it allowed her to find confidence in herself and it deepened her love for astronomy. As you are describing your scientific experiences, you also want to mention what was your project about, your contributions to that project, and what you have learned. The other theme that you want to highlight in your personal statement is why you are applying to this program. In this example, the applicant highlights or mentions that her first choice project is the legal project at MIT Haystack because it would allow her to combine her love of galaxies with her previous research experience. I also love the fact that she's able to tie some of the things that she learned in the classroom, such as black holes, and using that knowledge and apply it by working in the Event Horizon Telescope. Make sure that you highlight the research strengths of the program and how they are aligned with your scientific interest. And last, you want to make sure that you emphasize how the program will help you achieve your short and long-term goals. You can redirect and vote. I want to become a professor. My long-term career goal is to become a scientific researcher. I want to become a medical scientist. You can say that. And you want to show that you are taking the steps to achieve that goal. I wanna summarize some of the key points that I've discussed with you about personal statements. First of all, they are going to provide a cohesive story. You want to develop a single unifying theme that ties together your research experience, your scientific motivation, and biographical details. You want to focus on meaningful experiences that highlight your strengths, your challenges, and the lessons that you've learned. Emphasize how the program will help you achieve your professional goals, and narrate your story using succinct and direct language. One of the things, or one of the questions that we ask, that we get asked a lot also, is how do I start writing a personal statement? And I want to tell you that a lot of the times, students may focus too much on the end product, what that may look like. My advice to you is don't worry about that because you're going to do multiple and multiple revisions of your personal statement. First of all, think about an outline, how 
do you want your story to be structured? And once you are happy with the outline, sit with your computer and start typing out your story. Don't worry about how it looks right now. Because then, once you have everything written down, you can go through multiple rounds of revisions and slowly that personal statement will take shape and form to provide a final product that you can submit to the uh, programs. Therefore, you must proofread extensively. Ask your science professors to look over your personal statements. Ask your classmates. Ask your TAs. And you also can ask your English and need that you met your friends to help you proofread through the statement. Now, for the remainder of the uh, presentation, I want to focus, as you're thinking about applying to some research programs, I want you to start thinking of some of the questions that you need to answer and that you want to talk about in your personal statement. So, the programs will ask you for a series of questions to assess your preparation. What are your future career goals? Do you want to do scientific research? Are you thinking of pursuing the uh, uh, physician scientist route? Are you thinking of a completely different science related career path? Or maybe you're not sure, and that's okay, because we're here to help you determine or to, for you to carve out your own path. So what I want you to live with is these three questions. Now, first of all, is how did you become interested in science and what research areas are most interesting to you? What are the good qualities of a good scientist? And what academic and personal experience do you have that make you a good scientist? And please describe any major challenges, how you overcame those, and what you have learned about yourself and others as a result of this experience. And with this, I will conclude my talk. I want to thank Scientifico Latino, the Rockefeller Inclusive Science Initiative, our sponsors, the Rockefeller University and the Howard Hughes Medical Institute, and Donovan and Sophia for making possible this presentation. Thank you so much, and I'll be happy to take your questions. Thank you. Thank you so much, Carlos. That was great. And yeah, very, very helpful. I think I was, I was also a summer student at Rockefeller, so I was just thinking like how much it would have helped me to have seen this when, when I was applying. You know. So, um, Donovan, do we have um, questions for Carlos? Is it the, it's in the Q&A, right? Yeah, so if anyone has any questions, you know, feel free to just throw in the question in it, uh, the Q&A section. You can just type it in and we'll do, we'll uh, read the question out loud for Carlos to answer as well. And, you know, don't be afraid. Oh, um, oh okay. So we have one. Um, so uh, first of all, they're thanking you for your talk and they're asking, um, how do you apply for summer programs during COVID-19 and if there's any summer programs that are actually currently happening? That is a great question. That would be program specific. I know that some programs are trying to incorporate an online element to their summer programs where you can still be able to do some remote work. And I know that some of the programs have entirely canceled their programs at least for the summer. What I will suggest to you is that try to narrow down the list of programs that you are interested in and check whether or not they're going to be accessible for the next, uh, for the next cycle. And okay, then the next one we have is, um, what would you suggest for students that have applied previously but have not gotten into summer programs? That is an excellent question. What I will recommend you is sit down with a faculty member that you have a close professional relationship and try to go over your academic preparation and other experiences that you had. Then try to identify 
some areas we can continue working on and try to improve on those areas. If you have more specific questions about the program or of your application, I will be happy to take a look with you and provide you more direct feedback. Um, okay, um, then we have one of, what would you suggest doing a summer program to get more experience? Like, would you suggest doing a summer program to have more experience, if, if, even if you're already going to lab in your home institution? Can you repeat that question again? So, if someone's already, go, uh, already working in the lab in their home institution, do you think it's still worth applying to a summer research program for, to get more lab experience? Absolutely. That is a really good question. All of, the, all of the questions have been good so far. I want to emphasize one thing, and that is by going to another institution, you are going to be exposed to a different way of doing science. You will have an opportunity to expand and get to know other scientists. And you can also be exposed to other research fields that you may be interested. If you think, I, I will highly recommend you to at least do the one summer which is experience outside of your home institution. So you can expand your scientific curiosity, get exposed to other scientific fields, and also get to know other scientists. Because one thing that I didn't mention is that as you're thinking of applying to graduate school, a lot of these people can help you and support you as you're going through that process. And um, we have another question of what should be highlighted on a CV when you're applying for a summer program? I will, that's a really good question. What you wanna first emphasize is, you wanna emphasize if you have any research experience. If you don't have research experience, but you may have some experience working in, through some laboratory classwork, you can talk about some of the skills that you've learned I remember that in one of my laboratory classes, they taught us how to do a PCR, and I, you can mention that. So you can have a section of research skills. It is also helpful, even if you're gonna submit a resume, add a transcript, you can talk about some of the classes that you've taken and any extracurricular activities that you're involved with. And that we also have one about how many programs should one apply to? That is a good question. I will say apply anywhere between five to 10 programs. That's a number that you want to aim for. But I wouldn't apply more than that because it can be quite a lot of work. And I wouldn't apply to less than that, than five, because then you run into the issue that you may not um, be offered an opportunity to attend one of the programs. So I will say anywhere between five to 10. And we have a last one of, is there any summer research programs that are aimed specifically for people that want either to go to med school or to MD and PhD programs? Absolutely they are. I want to say that for MD PhD programs, there are programs specifically for students that are thinking of pursuing the medical scientist route. Two programs that I've talked about in my presentation are the gateways to the laboratory at Weill Cornell in the SMART program at the University of Michigan. Now, with medical school, it gets a little bit interesting because some research programs will only admit students that are thinking of either doing PhD or MD-PhD. If you are unsure as to what you want to do, you can apply for the MD-PhD programs. If you convince yourself of your thinking that just what you want to do is just medical school, I want to emphasize that there are other programs that are not research focused, but are more clinically focused that will help students get the clinical experience that they need to apply for medical school. Just make sure that as you are selecting the list of programs, that you look carefully at what is it or what kind of students they're looking for. Uh, oh, actually we have one last one in the chat. So, okay, so you emphasized a lot about asking for science professors for um, letters of recommendation, but I guess the person is asking that if you do have research experience, is it okay to only have um, questions from uh, like the PIs and the mentors of your research experiences? Or should you have at least one science professor always give you a letter? 
and then they're also asking if it's okay to have letters of recommendations from uh, internship supervisors. That is a really good question. I want to emphasize the following word, and that is that you want to get all of them are acceptable. What you want, what you want from a letter, so what you want from someone who is one going to write you a letter of recommendation, you want someone with whom you have a good professional relationship. Let's say, for example, that you took a class and you did well, you got an A plus. But if the professor doesn't really know you, but you have been working with this PI and you've done research in the laboratory and you already have a good relationship, you want to ask that professor with whom you have already been working with. You want someone who will be able to talk to you, that will be able to talk about you as an individual, a professional, and as a scientist. And that takes time to be to develop. So think very carefully about who you think can talk best about you and choose those individuals. This will be harder as you are a freshman student, especially since you haven't really developed those contacts, which brings me to the next point. If you are early in your college career, it is you need to start now to start developing those professional relationships so that by the time that you become a sophomore or a junior, you can ask, you can reach out to those people and ask them for a letter of recommendation. So think very carefully, who do you think is gonna write best about you, who can really highlight your skills, your academic preparation, and then ask them for a letter of recommendation. It is always helpful to have, if, all you, if you have three professors and you have done research with all three of them, and all three of them can talk about your research experience, then go for it. Um, as for an internship supervisor, you can provide a little bit more feedback. You can provide more details about that. It will depend also on the nature of the internship and how well the other person knows you. If this is a supervisor that knows you very well, then you can definitely ask the supervisor. Well, I think that's it. So I just want to thank you again, Carlos, for this really great presentation and, and that I think we all found very, very helpful. And thank you everybody for coming and attending this. Yeah. That was really great, thank you. I just wanted to add one more thing. Um, just so everyone know, um, as this one ends, there will be a closing remarks. Um, and that should be in webinar room four, which is, um, oh, so you can just click on the webinar room four link and then it will open you back up to the closing remarks at uh, 2.30. But that was really great, Carlos. I wish I actually had that when I applied. <laughs> <Yeah>, me too. Yeah. <laughs> super helpful. Thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate it. And I hope that I want to say, I want to wish all of you guys good luck with everything. So, and thank you so much to the uh, Rockefeller Inclusive Science Initiative for making this possible. So have a wonderful weekend. Thank you, guys. Uh, thank you, everyone.